their long-held dream, or some would say fantasy, of a European army. The argument goes, Trump will leave NATO, therefore Europe needs to do this stuff for itself. Now, folks, there is no evidence of that whatsoever. All he ever did when he was president last time round is condemn 25 NATO members for not paying the basic membership fee. But fast out of the blocks today came Manfred Weber, a former colleague of mine from the European Parliament. He's the leader of the centre-right EPP group. They're the biggest political grouping across the European Union. He was talking to Politico, and he was talking about European nuclear defences, the fact that NATO relies heavily on US nuclear warheads. And he has said, Europe must build deterrence. We must be able to deter and defend ourselves. So it isn't just an active army, air force and navy the European Union now wants. They now want their own nuclear weapons. This strikes me as being mad, strikes me as being really rather dangerous too. Well, joining me to discuss this is Hamish de Bretton Gordon, former commanding officer of the UK's Joint Chemical, Biological, Radiological and Nuclear Regiment, and of course, a former <coughs> army officer. Hamish, we've seen a little bit of this before, haven't we? You know, America's going to go, America won't be our friend anymore, we need to have stronger defences at a European level. But this is a step that I've never heard before. Good evening, Nigel. Yeah, Good evening. It, it's, it's bonkers. I mean, it's absolute madness. The last thing we need at the moment is more nuclear proliferation. We've seen a lot of the instability in the world at the moment is because the Iranians are getting hold of nuclear weapons and the North Koreans are getting hold of nuclear weapons. So the thought of another country, and um, when it comes to deterrence, you know, he, I don't agree with you that the Americans again let us down. I've, I was with a bunch of American military people in London today, and we actually discussed this, and they were they were distraught that they thought that we or the Europeans thought that they wouldn't, you know, if there was to be a war, a conflict with Russia, they wouldn't get involved. So if we park that for a moment, if you look at, you know, ourselves and the French, who are the two key nuclear nations, Putin knows that there are enough nuclear weapons that Britain and France holds to completely eradicate Russia anyway. The fact that nuclear weapons have kept the peace for the last 75 years is because the Russians, ourselves and the French and the Americans have parity. So to get a, a new kid on the block is crazy. And, and NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, um, it was there, it was designed after the Second World War to keep the peace in Europe and prevent Russian expansionism. Now, the Russians are heading west, which is why absolutely essential we ensure Ukraine prevails. But having a, a, an EU nuke in the, in, the, in the pot, as it were, would make things dramatically worse rather than better. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Ukraine there, Hamish. I've been hearing politicians say Ukraine's going to win, Ukraine must win. Seems to me the whole thing's a total stalemate that's going to go on for many years. Well, I, uh, let's, let's hope it doesn't. And that's certainly, uh, I think, the desire of everybody uh, in Europe and, and the US. The critical thing is that we keep supplying Ukraine with the ammunition it needs and the weapons it needs. Um, true at the moment, there is things that are in some sort of stalemate, but I think there are a few glimmers on the horizon that uh, Ukraine now has, has maritime superiority. The Black Sea fleet has disappeared. That's key from, uh, from uh, the air. Ukraine is getting air superiority, it's getting F-16s arriving soon. And in order for them to enable their ground maneuver warfare, their tanks and their infantry fighting vehicles, to break through the Russian lines, they need it. They need that um, air superiority. So, so things are happening. We know the Russians are really struggling. They've lost hundreds of thousands of, of young men, and it's only young Russian men and well, pretty much have. Have come from the ethnic areas that are put into the fight. So, yeah, as long as we keep supporting Ukraine and giving them what they require, I'm sure that they will prevail. But uh, you know, throwing trying to get uh, the EU to have some nuclear weapons will, yeah, will not, not add to that fight in any way. No. Hamish, thank you as ever for coming on and discussing these very important issues with us. Thank you. Well, we'll see.